Hello everyone and welcome to Newegg TV. My name is Paul and today is a fantastic day because the GTX 660 Ti has just launched. Uh, Kepler is the code name for the architecture that came out originally with the GTX 680. And if you're more a mid-range gamer than an enthusiast gamer with lots of money to throw at stuff, uh, you might have been sort of missing out on the 600 series thus far and we're not going to even talk about those rebadged Fermi cards. But what I will talk about is the 660 Ti's that I have here in front of me. Uh, I've run benchmarks on pretty much all these cards. Uh, EVGA even provided me with two of, the, two of theirs, so I'm going to give you guys some numbers for 660 Ti SLI benchmarks. And uh, for a point of reference for you guys, since I'm going to be showing you all of these in comparison to one another, uh, I also ran the benchmark tests on this, which is the GTX 580, which is the former top-of-the-line video card from, um, from NVIDIA. This is the ASUS version, so it's actually a triple slot cooler, and uh, it's overclocked. So bear that in mind as you're looking at the benchmarks, since I do do uh, uh, temperatures for all of those as well. But uh, there's the, uh, the horses in this competition. And uh, that being said, let's talk a little bit more about the 660 Ti and the Fermi architecture. No, Kepler architecture. The 660 Ti features the GK104 GPU, which is based on the new Kepler architecture from NVIDIA, which is 28 nanometer based. Uh, the reference models, such as the PNY that we have here, will give you a core clock of 950 megahertz and a boost clock of 980 megahertz. Boost clock is one of the awesome new features of these video cards, and we have a wide variety of them here. Now, the cool thing about the 660 Ti is really how close it hues to the 670, unless, of course, you just recently purchased a 670. But don't worry, if you got a 670, that's still worth your money because the 670 has a 256-bit memory interface. The 660 Ti has a 192-bit memory interface. It's just got one less memory controller on the card. And really what that's going to affect is your higher-end eye candy type of stuff, which is really what you pay for when you get a higher-end video card anyway. Uh, with the 192 bits uh, mem memory interface, you're not going to see quite as good a performance with MSAA, anti-aliasing, uh, anisotropic filtering. However, you do get the 600 series features such as TXAA and FXAA, which are other anti-aliasing techniques that NVIDIA has introduced, which don't give you as much of a frame rate hit when you enable them. So keep, out, keep an eye out for games that have those features enabled. Now our PNY card here is our example of our reference design video card. It's also running at stock speeds as set by NVIDIA for the 660 Ti. And you'll notice here again, same PCB design as well as the uh, shroud cooler design that you saw with the 670. And uh, you'll also see right there is where the GPU resides. Uh, another one of the great things about the 660 Ti, you get the same amount of CUDA cores, 1,344 as the 670. So if you are going to be using this for GPU compute stuff, it is very capable in that respect. Also for SLI, you do have three-way SLI support. Uh, that is one less than the four-way SLI support that's available with the 670. So there's another difference between the two cards. But one of the really cool things that was introduced with the 600 series is you can actually do video outs from all four video outputs that are on the card itself. And that includes four full-size video out connectors, two DVI, dual link DVI, uh, as well as the HDMI and the display port. You can use three of these video outs for gaming and you can use the fourth as a companion display so you can pull up web pages or a chat browser or whatever you might want to pull up. And now that we've talked a little bit about the video card, let's move on to our benchmarks and our test bed, which is right here, or at least most of it is right here. This is a Maximus 5 Gene and I wanted to test this video card on a, uh, I could have thrown it on a 3960X test bed and seen what the fastest processor in the world could do, but I really wanted to see something a little bit more reasonable and a configuration that I'm guessing is going to be very popular for this video card, that being a 3570K processor, the Core i5 that's uh, sort of right in the mid-range for NVIDIA, I'm sorry, for Intel, also a K SKU so it's unlockable. Uh, also we have the Z77 chipset in our Maximus 5G motherboard right here, and uh, that's pretty much it. The only real special, special sauce I have uh, involved here is the Trident X memory, which ru was running at 2666, which is a bit higher than most uh, folks would, would be running memory speeds at. But um, after comparing a few tests, it really didn't uh, give me too much of a boost. So most of the uh, benchmarks you're going to see right now are just the video cards themselves. <laughs>
So there's your benchmarks, guys, and I'm happy to say that the 660 Ti is performing extremely well, especially when you compare it to the 500 series. Uh, it has beaten the 580 in most of our benchmarks, except when that really high-end eye candy, like the 4 times MSAA or the anisotropic filtering, is turned on. Uh, another cool thing is right now there's a wide variety of video cards available. Apart from the reference design here, you have shroud style coolers like EVGA has gone with right here. You also have open coolers like we have with the Gigabyte, the MSI, and the Zotac. The Zotac wins the award for being the tiniest of all of these video cards as well. Uh, but really, if you're curious which is better, the shroud sty style cooler or the open air cooler, it's really going to depend on your case's cooling configuration. The shroud style, style cooler, the GPUs run hotter, as you probably saw in the benchmarks, but it's ejecting most of that hot air out the back of the case because this is a contained shroud. The open air coolers, the GPU stays cooler, but it is ejecting that air out into your case, so the ambient temperature in your case is going to be a little bit higher. Uh, that said, there's your 660 Ti. It's a fantastic buy for anyone who's looking to make a really solid mid-range gaming machine. We're glad that NVIDIA has finally released it, and uh, just in time for the holidays. Anyway, that's going to wrap it up for this video. We hope you enjoyed, guys. Once again, this has been the NVIDIA GeForce GTX 660 Ti in a variety of flavors. I'm Paul with Newegg TV, and if you enjoyed today's video, you can head over to our Newegg YouTube channel. And of course, don't forget to subscribe for more tech videos. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.